Hello, my name is Mark, and I thank you so much for coming by today. A few weeks ago, I did a review video on the Sharpie S-Gel pens, and uh, I really liked them. They were fine. There was a little disappointment in the, the payout of the ink and uh, the fact that they do wash away with water. They activate with water. So uh, they weren't my favorite pens in the world. I still, my, my go-to is the Pilot G2 pens. But in the review, uh, there was a lot of feedback in the comments and the overall winner, it seems, it seems everybody has an opinion on gel pens and I, I can understand why. Uh, I love gel pens myself. Uh, people like Inkjoy, they like uh, the Pentel, but it seems the overall winner in the popular opinion section is Uniball. And there's a whole bunch of Uniball pens out there. I have these ones here. These are the 207s, and we're going to take a look at these. But we're also going to take a look at some others by Uniball and find out exactly why these are popular. Now, this is a by-demand video, so this is uh, based on the feedback from viewers. And I really appreciate that feedback because it helps me learn and understand and find new products for myself. Now, I'm always on the search for these kind of pens and new products. So thank you to everybody who commented and checked out that video. I'll put a link down below so you can find an easy way to that other video for the Sharpie pens. But uh, right now, let's take a look at Uniball. If you're not familiar with Uniball, it is a brand created by the Mitsubishi Pencil Company. Now, Mitsubishi Pencil has been around since the late 1800s, and uh, they were the ones who started making pencils, mechanical pencils, and then in the late 60s and 70s, they got into making ballpoint pens and what they call performance pens, and they've been doing that ever since. Now, I personally love these pens. They're great. I've been using them for years. Uh, I use the Signos. I use the Vision Elite. There's the Air, the Micro Air, the Eye. There's a ton, <laughs> a ton of Uniball products. Uh, one of the ones you may be familiar with is the Posca Markers. They're also made by Uniball or Mitsubishi Pencil. So they have a whole line of different products that are just wonderful to use and they have a big following people love these pens as you can see here i'm showing you basically what's in my collection here i have a bunch of these pens and i use them all the time they're not my go-to my go-to pen like i said in my previous video is the pilot g2 pen those i use on a daily work basis so those are my work pens every day these pens are what i use mostly at home and therefore basically keeping in the junk drawer when I need to write something. They're up in my studio and in my office. So these are my work pens at home, but I also love to draw with these pens too. So between the Pilots and the Uniballs, there's a lot of love for these pens and you grow really attached to them. So you keep buying them over and over. Now, I'm not suggesting you go out and buy these pens. I just want to give you a short, brief view of what I use and based on the viewer feedback, a lot of other people are using as well. Now, in this little test here, you can see I'm doing uh, some vertical lines, which are straight up and down strokes. And then the horizontal ones are the normal writing style, casual at an angle. And then the last verticals are an extreme exaggerated angle of writing. So um, you can see here the tips of these pens. The Air is a rollerball pen and the Signo and the elites are gel pens. So I personally am just blown away by the technology of these pens. When I was growing up, we used Bic uh, ballpoint pens. That was my go-to pen for everything. And I love the fact that they had red, green, blue, whatever you needed, black. And all my drawings back then were done with ballpoint pen. So the technology of how they've gone from just that tube of ink that goes into a, a ball at the tip has been really, really uh, just evolved over time. And I love that. Now, I'll get into that in a minute too. But here what I'm trying to do is show what writing with these looks like when you try to smear them. Because a lot of these pens will market themselves, including the Sharpie pens, as non-smear or, res or smear resistant, which I find if it's really hard to prove that because when you're writing a letter, and the ink is fresh and you accidentally swipe your finger or your hand across it, it's going to smear. Now, if it sits there for a little while, maybe a day or two, once it dries fully, then they're not so likely to smear. You can even see here with this Air Micro that 
it doesn't smear once it dries a little bit, but fresh on the paper, it's going to smear. So if you're writing a letter to a friend and your hand just happens to just kind of go across the page, it's likely going to smear. And that's just typical. Now, what I was wondering about with some of these was, will they activate with water? So I'm using this Holbein water brush just to see if the water will activate this ink. Now, with the Signo 0.38 pen, it resisted pretty well. The Vision Elites are a much heavier ink. This is, um, supposedly it's archival ink and it's, uh, it's supposed to resist water, but I'm not seeing that here. So, but, um, the ink is good quality and it will last. It doesn't, supposedly it doesn't fade in the sun too quickly. So it's going to last a long time, but, uh, you can see here, the airs are a little bit more resistant than the elite pens. So that's kind of a plus for me, but still, Water is going to activate these no matter what. So these are not going to be good for the way I like to work, which is to apply, to do a drawing in the pen and then apply watercolor over the pen. For that, I would need to use the Micron, the Sakura Micron pens, the Copic Multiliner pens, or just India ink with a dip pen. And those are the standard pens I use for drawing. Now, Uniball they have a whole line of color products too. So these are their color series Signo pens, uh, which I use these at work all the time, primarily the red, green, and blue, because I have to mark things up at work and you know indicate changes or whatever. So these are my go-to pens at work for just that reason. Uh, I don't use them much for drawing anymore. I used to use them just for fun for drawing and uh, I kind of put them away from that, so I don't use them too often for that. But uh, they are still great pens. They write really well. Uh, they're very reliable. And again, back to the technology aspect, the way that the technology has evolved for these gel pens with the, the filaments going up through the chamber, uh, they're not like other pens which have a cotton filament or a fabric filament that is saturated with ink. These have a, a chamber of ink with a filament that runs right up to the tip and delivers the ink right to that ball. So the fact that they don't clog, the fact that they don't bleed all over the place, it's really remarkable technology. Now, these are the ones that I just bought. And uh, you could see back with the color ones that some of them also activate with water as well. But here you see it, pro these protect against water. This is super ink. And... Um, that's one thing I see a lot of is that, uh, you know, the promise that these are water resistant, the promise that some gel pens uh, won't activate with water, it's just not accurate. So I think it's safe to just go into buying gel pens and assume that they're going to activate with water, which, as I've shown in other videos, can be a real benefit if you know how to use it. So if you do a drawing with a, uh, a gel pen and you activate it with water, you can actually make it sort of like a little watercolor drawing with the ink. So it can be used to your advantage. Now, these are the different styles of the Signo pens. There's the 0.38, the 0.5, and I believe the 1.0. I did not go for the 0.7. I just didn't feel like I needed it. So there is a 0.7 if you need it out there. This Crescent sketchbook, as you can see here, I do a lot of gel pen drawing in these books. Uh, it's a lot of fun. I sometimes use Sharpie. The paper itself, it doesn't bleed through. Ink doesn't go through these pages, which I really like. So this Crescent book is very smooth paper. It's thick paper. And uh, I really enjoy this book when I travel. So here I'm just going to do a little bit of a writing test and see how these write on a paper surface that I like to use. So uh, this is sort of like... The texture is kind of like office paper, you know, like a copier paper. But like I said, it's thicker and it's uh, more resistant to bleeding through. So the 0.38 obviously writes very smooth and fluid. The ink is outstanding because it just, it's, it's a fluid ink chamber. So you get a nice delivery, a nice payout, especially with this 1.0, the bold. It just comes right out. And uh, if you're not careful, <laughs> you can smear this very easily. So what I'm going to do is let this... Uh, just kind of just put some water on it and see, uh, let me see how this works out. Again, this is fresh ink right on the paper, so it's obviously going to activate very quickly, especially this bold. The water is just going to activate the ink without any issues. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little circle test, and one is just an outline circle, the other is filled in, obviously. 
with the ultra and then I'm going to do the um, the 0.5 size so that's the 0.3 here's the 0.5 and uh, there you go actually that's the micro size sorry <laughs> but here I'll do the bold one and what I'm going to do is I'm going to let these sit for a few days and let them dry out and see how they are when I come back so uh, in the blink of an eye look they're dry and here we are ready to go so after a few days, I came back thinking that they were going to resist, but sure enough, these Signo pens activated just as if they were fresh ink. So um, I'm not disappointed. I just, I, I was hoping for more. So uh, especially when you see that the, the marketing on the package says protects against water. I'm not quite sure what that means. So um, these are great pens for writing uh, and I'll use them regularly for writing. So Again, I'm not trying to pitch these pens on people, but based on the feedback that I, I got from my other video, the Sharpie video, uh, a lot of people really like the Uniball products. And I do too. And, and that's the great thing is we can all agree that they're really good pens. However, it is good to be aware of what their, their limitations are. And so, you know, for me, I'm going to keep drawing with these pens and I'm going to have a good time doing it because they're really good pens. And like I said, no matter what sort of brand you are into, if you like the Pilot Pens, if you like Inkjoy, if you like Jelly Roll, I don't really think it matters too much as long as it makes you happy and you're satisfied with the results. And that's what this kind of a video is about is, hey, look, this is, this is a product that you may not have tried. This is somebody trying it for you and giving you an insight to it. There's a million different gel pens on the market to choose from. So whichever one you want, I can just tell you that I use these as an illustrator and as, as someone who does a lot of paperwork. These are fine for me and I really enjoy them as much as I enjoy the pilots. Uh, I tend to go toward the pilot pens more just because that's what I like and what I'm used to. But um, like I said, Uniball is a really good company. They've been around a long time. They've been uh, standing the test of time for years. And it, <laughs> as you can see, they've got a lot of products under their belt. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, if you use these products, tell me about your experience down below in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching, as always. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe, and I'd love to bring you more content like this in the future. As always, please stay creative, stay happy, and as always, God bless.